Hey guys, Monty here. I'm just sitting on my sleeping pad next to this warm campfire and enjoying this beautiful wintry weather. My dad said there's something special about today's video, but I don't know what he's talking about because he blabs a lot and I just tune him out. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am out with uh, Das Flufenstinks, and uh, we're gonna spend another night out here winter camping. This is going to be our spot for the evening. We've got a couple of trees, tie tarps to. Not big trees, they're gonna pull in a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I'm actually struggling to find uh, a couple of trees that are bigger in diameter that are in, like set up perfectly. It's all kind of like open and then bunches of trees. So we'll be fine with just using these little ones. But anyways, as you can tell from the title of the video, this is the $500 winter camping gear loadout challenge. Um, so for those of you that have been following the channel watch the past few videos, I limited myself to spending $500 to get a full winter camping loadout, all the gear you need, except for clothing, uh, gloves, hat, the stuff that I wear on my person and snowshoes. Now the first thing I want to say about this is that this is not a survival challenge, okay? Survival, you could go out here with just your, there's a guy that did a video on just camping out in a loincloth in winter. You can, as long as you got the knowledge and the skill, you don't need to spend any money and get out here, really. But you're gonna be in a survival situation and you're gonna be survival camping, which is not fun. I like to have fun, I like to be comfortable. So for $500, I got everything to have a nice, comfortable winter camp to be able to cook up a delicious meal like we're gonna do tonight and just enjoy yourself and have fun. So if you wanna see all the gear that I am using that's packed in the sled here and the backpack, um, you can check out this video which I will link up here. Let's see if you're looking at me. Up here, right? It'll be up here. I'll link the video where I go over all the gear that I bought with this $500. I'm gonna be using it this one time and then I'm giving it away to one lucky winner and I've already decided who's gonna win it and everything, so yada, yada, yada. Um, I wanna start off by saying the one thing that I did not uh, fit into the budget that I really wish I would've, that I always bring, is a shovel. I couldn't fit it because I only like the one shovel that I use and I always use a shovel to dig out a nice spot, but uh, we're gonna do it without a shovel today. You can use your snowshoes as a secondary shovel. I'm gonna go without that. Um, yeah, I really like the shovel. What we're gonna do is just pack out the ground and make a nice flat spot. So I'll be, I'll be kind of reviewing this stuff as I go and uh, we'll just talk about things, but let's start getting camp set up because uh, we got quite the late start. <laughs> We've got like two and a half hours of light left. So we gotta get cruising here. You'll notice on walking in here, I didn't really sink in the uh, 
snow much. And that's because uh, there's a nice ice layer and uh, so the, the, the snow is kind of packy. And uh, yeah, so I'm just as long as I have my snowshoes on, I'm gliding across the snow. And uh, yeah, there's still at least two feet of snow. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, Monty. Yeah, there's. Stop it. Hey, okay, okay. Leave it, leave it. That's a. That's hey, Monty, stop. Ah, no, no, no. Monty! Monty, stop. Okay, okay. Alright, alright, alright. Monty, leave it. So, where was I? Before I got rudely interrupted. By the, by the Monty. There's at least two, there's at least two feet of snow. Uh, I think more like three feet. We'll find out tonight actually because since we're not going to be digging out a fire pit or any area, we're going to be setting our fire on top of the snow and it's just going to burn down. So I guess I can't really do this without him yelling at me right now. He just likes when I march found this out the last time I built the hot tent. So the date is what? What are we at? March 20, March 20th or later. I don't, I don't know the day exactly. End of, end of March. And as you can see, it's still wintry. We still got Hey, I have had it to hear, mister. I will ground you and take you home if you don't stop. See, he didn't like that. He didn't, he didn't like it and threatened with going home and being grounded. <laughs> okay, all right. Monty, I'm, I'm not going to take you home. I'm not going to take you home, but please, 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 please. Okay, he's he's crazy. He's been wound up. Anyways, yeah, end of March. It's still winter here. It's technically spring, but we still got two, three feet of snow. We've had a lot of melting days. It's been a really weird winter, and that's why it's so packy. So I think with all this packiness, we're not going to be getting to a Quincy this winter, I don't think, guys. I know I said I was going to do one. I've been doing one every winter. But it's just been, it was raining the other day, so that's why there's just so much, it's just thick, icy layer, and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shut off the camera here. We're just gonna pack out, flat this down, out down this area a little bit more with my snowshoes, just so that we're not slipping around. And then we're gonna set up a tarp. the only way, it's the only way to keep him from barking is to just carry him while I do it. But you went off. Oh, did I mention that it's warm today? That I'm sweating on the way in? <sighs> yeah, I'm toasty. So, um, yeah, besides the shovel, normally I have a separate tarp that I wrap the uh, sled in, but I just wrap this in the tarp that I'm using 
right now. So normally what I do is I'll set up my tarp and then I'll keep my sled off to the side and cover it with this tarp that I, the secondary tarp, and just leave all my stuff under it. But today, luckily it's, you know, it's beautiful out today. There's no snow falling right now. There's not any wind to blow this stuff off. If I have it under these trees, it'll melty. So I'm just gonna have to, you know, keep an eye out, keep it off to the side, and then we're gonna put it under the tarp later tonight. So like I said, I don't remember the names, and most, most of this gear, the stuff that I don't normally use, um, I don't know the names of like this tarp, for example. I have no idea what this tarp is. I can't remember. I have to watch the video again to find out. But we'll see how she holds up. Should be fine. It feels nice. A little bit heavier than my normal tarp, but I don't think for the price it is, I don't think the weight's much at all. So let's look at some stuff we got here. Okay. So before I start doing anything else, I'd like to mention the gear that I brought out that's not part of this challenge. So my layering system, obviously my jacket, my gloves, my hat, my sunglasses, uh, my boots, my snowshoes, that's just, I'm not including that in this challenge because it's impossible to get under 500 bucks if you wanna include all that layering and stuff. What I wear for layering out in winter is some uh, smart wool, merino wool layers. I wear only one, only one upper, one legs, and uh, this Carhartt Shoreline bibs and jacket, which is not insulated at all, it's just waterproof. That's all I wear, no matter how cold the temperature is, when I'm just walking in and I'm doing all the work. I don't usually ever wear any other layers while I'm working. This is plenty. I'm pretty good at maintaining my temperature, I'm not sweating too much, I take my time. But yeah, this is all I wear when uh, I'm working, that's it. Every video, it doesn't matter how cold, doesn't matter how warm, it's always the same. When I get, when it comes to night and I get a little chillier, I've got uh, insulated flannel, a sweatshirt, and multiple, like two, I've got, I bring two tops and two bottoms. I usually put on one more top of this, one more bottom, and my flannel, and that's usually all I wear. But I have extra on top of that if it gets colder. So that's my layering system. Other than that, um, I wanted to show the stuff that is not included. This is Monty's stuff. So this is Monty's sleeping pad. This is Monty's sleeping bag. Monty's wool blanket, and uh, Monty's other secondary pack, because he gets two just for, usually I'd give it to him right now, but he's just chilling. So yeah, that stuff is just his normal stuff. He's not a part of the challenge in any way. He's just doing his thing, so he's just gonna get his normal stuff. Now in the challenge, I included a Nalgene, a military surplus used sleeping bag, and a spork. Those three things, I'm not bringing out the ones that I'm gonna be giving away, because this is my sleeping bag. This is not the one that I showcased last week because if I slept in that sleeping bag, <laughs> it'd have a little bit of a stank to it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do that to the person I'm giving it away to. I'm just gonna use mine because it's the exact same bag. That one will probably be warmer and nicer and I'll let you christen that because yeah, you, you, you don't want me, uh, you know, playing the butt trumpet and all night and yeah, so. We'll just avoid that. And uh, Nalgene, it's a Nalgene. You'll just get a brand new one. I'm just using my old used one because it's the same thing. And my spork, the thing I'm gonna eat with, yeah, it could be clean, whatever. It's the exact same spork, so I'll just use mine. It's fine. Everything's fine, but I'm gonna be christening your pans. <laughs> That's for sure. So I just wanted to mention that quick. And also, I've got my own toiletry bag that I usually bring, which is just my toothbrush uh, and toothpaste and some chapstick and my first aid kit. That stuff's not included. That's just stuff you want to bring and I'm just, it's not part of the challenge. It's your toiletry stuff. I don't need to brush my teeth or put chapstick on my lips if I really wanted to, but I'm just, I just brought that stuff in case, you know. So those things are not included. Everything else is part of the challenge. And one other thing actually is I got this chair that I mentioned, this cheapo chair. I brought out my Helionox ground sheet because otherwise I'll sink right into the snow. This is from my chair, so this is not included. I didn't check to see if it fits on here. I am just simply curious to see if you can buy this Helionox sheet for a chair and use it with any other camping chair. So we will find that out tonight. I have no idea. I didn't want to check. I wanted to be surprised or excited. It'd be pretty cool if you could just buy this sheet because the Helionox chairs are kind of expensive. And mostly there's, a, there's other chairs that are the exact same that are a lot cheaper. So we'll find that out tonight. Other than that, I'm gonna put the stuff back so now you know what's not included in the challenge that I brought with me. 
blah, blah, blah. But like I said, this, these two and Spork are being given away and I did buy those as part of the thing. But yeah, okay, enough blabbing. Let's get to doing. So I like to do this thing called multitasking. So while we're setting up, I'm gonna be blowing up this sleeping pad, sleeping pad that I'm giving away. We'll see how it is. We'll let Monty lay on it first. Um, see if he likes it. But yeah, as I mentioned, I'm giving this stuff away, so I'm gonna try to be as gentle as possible and not get my mouth all over this. That blows up quick. Mm-hmm. Sure does. Monty, what do you think? You wanna wait, you wanna you wanna test it out first? Go ahead. I know it's not not the normal one. Go ahead. Lay it down. Lay it down. Test it out. There you go, good boy. What do you think? <laughs> Alright. Okay, now we need some rope. Yeah, we'll let Monty test out that one, but we're, we're gonna be sleeping on that one tonight. So the first thing we need to do is set up a ridge line. See, I've got a brand new 100 feet of paracord. Yep, instant rat's nest, so <laughs> congratulations to whoever I pass this rat's nest to. <laughs> yep, I, I, I couldn't take apart a bundle of paracord neatly for the life of me. I don't think it's in my blood. There we go, there's the end. We gotta be careful, we gotta conserve our paracord, just in case. So yeah, I think the temperatures are in, right now the 20s, and they were earlier in the 30s, maybe like low 30s, and they're supposed to be getting to single digits tonight. It's supposed to actually get decently cold tonight, so we'll get to, uh, you know, well, it's not gonna be, much different than my normal winter gear loadout. Other than that sleeping pad, that sleeping pad isn't, isn't uh, made for winter. So that's the one thing that uh, might be a little chillier, but I think it'll be, it'll be fine. Cause I used to use the other pad that Monty's gonna be sleeping on. Uh, and that's not made for winter. I used to use that when I started winter camping. Well, I'm thinking it's gonna be fine. What tree are we going to here? That tree? Okay. Monty seems to think it's okay. Monty. All right, actually, he's he's licking his paws all over it. I don't wanna have Monty slobber all over it. I'm gonna blow his up. Oh, Monty. Come here, Monty. Come here. I don't want you getting that all full of your slobber.
was a shield, Monty, from you. There you go, go ahead, that's your normal one. You can get this one all slobbery. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, Monty. Go over here. Oh, lay down. Monty, what's Go over here. Go over here. There you go. There you go. They're slipping around, okay. Okay. Let's see if we got enough clearance over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's just fine. Let's see how far back it goes. Okay. It's definitely 10 by 12. I wasn't sure if it was 12 by 12 or 10 by 12. I couldn't remember. But it's definitely 10 by 12. And we've got the, the 10 foot section going this way and it's gonna be 12 foot long. So we're gonna, we're gonna have some, quite some room under there. Uh, an extra two feet than normal. But I'm gonna tie a, a line in the center here to go to a tree back there. And then we're gonna take some sticks and stake down the back two corners and probably put one in the center. And then I'm gonna take some ropes and pull these corners to these trees just to get it nice and taut. But we need some more paracord. I see a rat's nest. Put a little extra length just to be safe. That one's gonna need to be longer. So we'll put that one there. All right, that should be all the paracord we need for right now. We're just gonna attach it over there. Come here for me. Here for there. This end for both knots, for the ridge line and these knots, I tied a double half hitch to secure it to the tree. And I've got a taut line hitch for both ropes on this end. Now we're just gonna pull this out here. Already, we've already got to adjust these ropes. <laughs> I just love it. So on this end, I'm just gonna loosen them up, give myself a foot of slack, and with these taut line hitches, all I gotta do is tighten it up so it's, it's not gonna take, it's not like it's a big deal. Or actually, I don't need to adjust the, the, the hitch at all, or the uh, ridge line. What am, I even, what am I even talking about? Yeah, the ridge line can stay. I, I, I didn't mean that. Wonder if I went too far. Probably. Oh no, that's about perfect. Okay. Just gonna grab myself a couple of sticks to stake up the back. And then uh counter will be ready. Then it's time for firewood. This one's not for you yet, okay? That'll come later. Got a stick here, nothing nothing fancy. Oop, that might uh pull too. Monty, these are my I need these, Monty. Monty. I need these, okay? For the shelter, for your shelter. Okay? Well, well okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it in a bit. I'm sorry to fake you out, okay? I'm sorry. 
Let me just finish setting this up. Okay, okay so the uh, compared to my normal tarp, the loops right here are very tiny. I can't even fit my thumb through these loops. So I need to use paracord to tie a little loop to so I can put on the stick and pull out. I can't actually put the stick through the loop. So, first, I guess, thing about the tarp that I've noticed, not really a big deal, not a, not a deal breaker by any means. It is convenient being able to put the stick right through the tarp, but eh, that's okay. Just gotta make some loops and tie some more rope. You know, it's a little bit loosey-goosey because I got this end wedged up in the tree. Bunty, there's a sleeping pad here. What are you doing? I'm gonna loosen up this stuff, re-tighten it over here. We need to move it over just a little bit more. I'm gonna make it nice. Yeah, I'm not perfect. No, sir. Much better. Okie dokes, folks. Now it's all set up. Plenty of room under the old tarp here. Okay, so tarp set up. We've got our spot flattened out. We're gonna have our fire definitely. Uh, yeah, like I said, we're not gonna really need a fire for warmth tonight. It's just gonna be a cooking fire. And we're gonna to wanna to burn enough wood to where it gets down to the ground so we can actually cook on it. Actually, you know what? We might end up digging out a fire pit uh, with the snowshoes here because it's gonna to be tough to cook <laughs> without having the grate on ground. So let's, let's do that really quick, actually. All right, buddy. Yeah, we got an hour and a half till the sun sets. So, you know, we're doing, we're doing all right. But yeah, you can use a, this is a, uh, your snowshoes as a shovel here. You always think, this is how much paracord we got left out of 100 feet. You know, you always think, oh, 100 feet, that's not that much. But I want to have the fire far away so that we don't burn any holes in it. Let's just basically what I'm gonna do is just dig a tiny like two feet diameter hole down to the the ground here and then uh, the fire will burn as it gets warm it'll make room it'll become a pit It's deeper than I thought. Oh no. Oh geez. <laughs> it might be more like four feet deep. We'll just have to 
Monty will have to watch out. Oh man. How deep is it? Well, there's the ground. It's gonna be fun starting this fire. <laughs> oh man. This is gonna be funny. We're gonna want some extra firewood to. Okay, yeah, we need to get some firewood. This is gonna be quite the pit here. So the snow, I'm on ground. So it goes up to here, right at the edge of my balls. Okay. Let's see how. So that's about, still got three feet of snow. Oh boy, okay, so we've got a tiny little hole. Um, so now we need a bunch of firewood, and we need to get a hot ripping fire for quite a while here. And we've only got pine, I don't see any hardwoods. So we're gonna burn a lot of pine, nice big logs, and we'll get this thing open, because I wanna be able to sit and step inside of it and uh, cook dinner. So yeah, we're gonna need some firewood. Put these snowshoes back on, get out the ax, Let's collect a bunch of firewood and get a fire started and clear down our fire pit. And like I said, if I had a shovel, I would do it. I could use the snowshoes. You know, they work as a shovel. But, you know, why do a bunch of extra work if I can just have the fire do the work for me? Clear out the pit all nice. We won't feel the heat of the fire right away, but it'll eventually come. Oh, don't fall in that pit, Monty. That would. <sighs> Monty. I'm sorry, Monty. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you see, that's what would happen. If you fell in that pit, you'd be stuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to push you in the pit. I mean, I did mean to, but I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, let's grab the axe, find some firewood. And I don't think I have any birch bark either. Well, that's a dollar. I guess I could start a fire with that. I don't know why that's in my pocket. What else do I got in here? Dead batteries. Oh, there's a little piece of birch bark chapstick. Some kind of permit. Oh, a multi tool. A wristband of some sort for something. Eh. Okay, firewood time. Hi, Monty. Oh, so we just climbed that hill looking around for some hardwoods or something a little better. And all the trees are healthy. I'm not seeing much that's dead that's super huge in diameter. There's nothing like good size. Huh. And all we've got down there is a bunch of little skinny dead pines. Nothing with crazy substance to burn a long hot fire. So we're gonna keep searching for a minute, otherwise we're gonna resort to those little pines. Beautiful, we're gonna have a sunset. We could come watch up here. I don't know if I'll feel like it. What are you, Monty? Nah, let's go back down. Let's see if we can find something down there. Come on. So far, this is the biggest piece I've found. Big dead pine here. Let's give her a little chop. See if it's rotten. Seems pretty soft.
Nice to have a little wet in the center, maybe, a resiny. Nice to have a freshly sharp axe. Okay, definitely, definitely a little solid, more solid and seasoned up here at the top. So that'll do. So, other than that, I just found a bunch of things like this. Oh, I guess you can't see me over there. I just found a ton of leaders, like this one here. There we go. Here's another leaner right here. This one's smaller. So there's all sorts of these light pines. They don't burn and last as long. There's another one right here. Oh, and another one. It's not going to break. I'm going to have to chop that one. <sighs> okay. So, I'll chop that guy, bring these all back to camp here, and I'm just going to keep... Ah. Gonna keep grabbing whatever I can knock over other than that. See if I can get a little bit larger diameter stuff. And then yeah, we'll start processing it. There's a lot of this light dead pine stuff. Okay. Oh. Hi, Monty. Monty, you want a stick? Do you want to go for the dog park? Oh, good boy. All right, Monty's just chilling. I think I've got plenty enough wood. There's some punkier stuff, some rotten stuff. That stuff's pretty seasoned over there, as you can see. Yeah, it's nice and good. But uh, sun's piercing out. Beautiful out there. If I went back up on the hill, I bet I could see a Nice sunset, that hill's back that way. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful little spot, nice and tucked away in here. Gorgeous, nice and quiet too. I heard a couple of birds earlier. But anyways, now I am going to go collect a few little sticks. 
Um, besides these, I, I, I can use most of these actually, but I am, I'm going to get some bigger sticks, just a few branches uh, for firewood. Just some extra, just because I like to get it ripping so I can burn these logs. We'll get some sticks and then we're going to just process, process up a couple pieces, start the fire, and then just keep processing and feeding it as we go. Oh, I am warm though, very warm, but yeah, I'm going to get some sticks and then I'm going to we'll get this thing going. Get out the old Sven saw. Haven't used one of these in a minute. This is the first foldable saw, band saw I used. Um, I like the Boreal 21 better. Whoop. Because it has no moving parts like this. Yep. If you lost this little wing nut somehow, you'd be pretty upset. I still prefer, um, I do prefer my other saw, but I would definitely take this one over, you know, those silkies and those hand folders. I don't like those as much. I like the band saws better. Personal, uh, those are my personal favorites. You always gotta make sure with this one, when you're tightening this, that the blade goes into this little divot here and the blade's straight. You don't want to have the blade be twisted. That will not be good for it. Okay, I'm just going to start by sawing up a couple of dry pieces here, nothing too crazy. As you can see I've got a monster pile of sticks and then we're going to spark up a fire and start making this pit here a little bigger. Okay, now I'm going to break up my these little sticks here a little bit, some of them, and let's spark up this fire. I did find some birch bark. Let's spark this bad boy out. As you can see, our fire pit's down there. You know, it's down there a little bit. So uh, I'm going to spark up the birch bark I got up here, and then we'll set it down in there. And I collected a little extra birch bark, and then... Uh, We'll just keep this thing from going because I don't I definitely don't want it going out when it's all the way down there. But I've got this little Swiss safe fire starter that I'm testing out. I don't know if it works very well, but we'll find out. I think it'll be alright. So we're just gonna take our bundle of birch bark here. Plant it around there. Got the old Mora knife. Oh. Ooh. Well it works. Dang it. Uh oh. Make me look bad. Swiss safe. There it goes. Extra birch bark I got. Drop around there. Drop my sticks down there. Ah. Oh, that's a fire pit. <laughs> An actual pit. This is not the most efficient way to start a fire by just dropping, throwing sticks at it, but you know what? It's gonna work, I think. I hope. I don't want to have to crawl down there and deal with it. <laughs> I 
you just remember the size of this here fire pit as it is now because it's gonna grow it sure is going to grow Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. No! No! <laughs> oh. I put another hole in a sleeping pad. It's the time, you can't even see it, but an ember landed on it. Yep, 100% made a hole. Dang it! Monty, it's 100% dad's fault. I put the, the fire was ripping too hot for the thumbnail picture and this dang nabbit thumbnail. Ugh. Luckily, it's a teeny little hole and I've got a patch kit that I'm going to use for the first time ever. I've never had a hole that I could actually patch, but this one's patchable. So, Monty, I'll throw the stick for you in a second. Dang it, we're gonna we're gonna patch this up. Let's let's get the camera over here. Dang, nab it. There it is. Yep, that was a ding dong. Got it too close to the fire. An ember rested on it. And you know, I thought I saw one on there, but I was just like busy taking a picture. <laughs> oh, what a dingleberry. 
so much for no pop sleeping pads 2020. Two pop sleeping pads in a pandemic. What a year. <laughs> Off to a great start. Okay, we gotta open up the valve here. Watch out, Monty. Looks like it's supposed to be dry. But we got an alcohol wipe. Watch out, Monty, get back. Suppress this into these holes as firmly as I can. Oh. Okay. Clear patch. Seal the deal. It's kind of cold, so it's not working as well. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so it's not ideal. I've got the little glue thing. And none of it, nothing is sticking because it's so cold. This sleeping pad's so cold. I should have warmed this up first, but I can't warm it up over the fire my hands, but anyways, I got this flex tape. I don't have my duct tape, it's not my normal little baggie, but uh, hopefully this holds air. I'm just gonna let this sit off to the side. And uh, yeah, if it was warmer out, this would stick really well, but it's just so cold, nothing wants to stick. So we'll see what happens. Let's hope for the best here. Go get it, Monty, go get it, it's over there, you can see it. Is that over here, Wendy? No, 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 no! Not right now. Dad's a ding dong. Dad is a dingle dong, dingle dong, dingle dong. We need some more wood on this fire. The hole is growing. The pit is growing. We got some holes down there. Don't fall in the fire pit, Monty. It's a, it's a big pit. It's a big pit. Is Dad ding dong? Look at Monty. Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Why have I done this? Oh. Oh well. At least it's not the, not the new stuff that's failing, you know. So unfortunately for Monty. Um, if that thing doesn't hold air, and I can't get it to hold air, he's going to have to use the Z-Rest tonight, just his, his backup one, because i got to test out that other one for winter. Normally, you know, I'd, uh, you know, forego my sleeping pad, give it to old Monty, but... I want to test it out, see how warm it keeps me. Ah, hopefully it just holds air. I mean, I, I pressed that glue thing into the holes pretty good, but it's just so cold. Maybe I should take my lighter to it and kind of just, that's what I might do. I might take my lighter, put it next to that metal and just kind of warm it up, see if I can get it to stick a little better. But I want to process up some of this firewood. We'll deal with that when we're chilling. For now, We've got to get this thing going here.
Watch out for that fire pit. It's a big pit. Where's your stick? Oh, hey! Little crispy turd. Where's that stick? Into the pit, we fell into the pit. Fell in the pit. Come on, monster, the pit. You fell into the pit. I fell into the pit. Mountain fell in the pit. He just fell in the pit. He just fell in the pit. Mountain gonna fall in the pit. Yeah, Monty, you're, uh, you're not bringing it back. Don't know why I'm even throwing it. Okay. So, let's get out. Let's comfortize our Monty here. No, we're not gonna, you can still feel the warmth of the fire. It's nothing crazy. Let's see. You'll still be able to. Let's try something out of here. Real quick. Go like this. snow on the fire. So much you can sit here. He'll definitely feel some of that fire now. I don't need it. I got all my layers on. Okay. Oh. Pull out all my layers. All right, we're gonna give Monty my sleeping pad covered in his wool blanket because we don't want any we don't want to get a hole on both of them you know but I do want him to get warm well he's warm it's not it's chilly I just don't want him to get cold I like to pamper my Monty you know you always gotta pamper your Monty 
Hey, Monty. Come here, Monty. Yeah, look at this comfy spot for you. Oh, you want me to take off those booties? Hold on. Give me them feet. Come here. All right, lay it down. Lay it down. There you go. That's not too bad, is it? All right. Now, I'm gonna try out this chair. Let's see if the ground sheet works. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna sink into the ground a bit. And that'll be okay. Let's just, it'd be nice if it, if it does work. These foot pegs are a little, ooh, actually I don't think it's gonna work with these foot pegs. See, these got the big old, <laughs> these big old foot pegs. I'm gonna try it anyways. Hopefully I don't break it. Oh, I kind of, The question is, oh, let's see, hey, hey, it works, ha, <laughs> sweet, all right, so everybody at home, if you've got any sort of camping chair, well, I guess I, can, I shouldn't speak for them all, but this one is just a random, generic, cheap old camping chair, and it works with the Helionox ground sheet. They're all, they all are about the same size, so that is good to know. That is nice, because these ground sheets are, they're, they're pretty much necessary in winter. And the Helionox is a nice chair. But I think it's the best feature about that thing is the ground sheet. Which works with this one. Whatever this one is. Gotta recover what I did with this here. It's the snow I knocked in. Oh, hi pal. Warm up our boots next to that there fire. I'm gonna crack a cold one. Sitting on my new camp chair. <sighs> all right. Now we are all set up and relaxed. So, it is just clear skies. I can see the stars, the stars are out. It is beautiful. It is a beautiful evening. It has been the weirdest winter I've ever experienced. It uh, it was just so warm so many days. It did not get cold this winter at all. I think we only had one week where it was really cold. But it wasn't really that cold. I think it only got, I can't even remember. It's a weird winter. And I mean, what the heck's going on with everything else? Well. We're not here to bring that up. We're out here to escape all that. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a warm winter and uh, it's looking like it's going to be 40s all next week and there's a bunch of rain in the forecast. And yeah, it rained the other day for all day, just wet rain. And you know, I don't mind camping in rain. I like camping in rain, just not this time of year rain. Like when it's like, 35 degrees, raining hard all day, and uh, with snow on the ground, that is just not enjoyable. I mean, when it's like, if it's 50 out or warmer and it's raining, I love the sound of rain. I love thunderstorms. I don't mind camping then. But if it's like right above freezing and it's just, you're gonna get soaked and yeah, that's no good. That's no fun. I don't mind an old wet soaker, but uh, if it's too cold and it's right on the verge of freezing, that's just, it doesn't sound fun. Especially for this guy. He's a frosty bunny. You liking that sleeping pad? Yeah? What do you think? You gonna have some delicious food tonight? We're gonna have a good one tonight. 
So yeah, this, we need to let this fire burn down. I'll, I'll, we'll show a comparison of the pit size to when it started to what it is now. It's definitely a lot bigger, but once this gets cleared out and this little area melts right back here, and I can just kind of put my grate down there, that's when we're going to start cooking. So it's definitely going to need to burn for another hour here. And it'll grow in size a little bit. Definitely keep growing. But as far as that sleeping pad goes, man. <sighs> what am I going to do with myself? I think I remember, I do remember seeing it. I can't remember if it was <laughs> when Monty was talking about me. I think I do remember seeing a glow of an ember on the sleeping pad and I just like thought it went out and it must not have. Winter camping's getting expensive, dang nabbit. Hey Monty. Yeah, you little big bunny. He didn't bring me the stick one time, he did not bring the stick back once. A little stinker. So far everything's working out great tarp looks nice. I like that it's nice. It's extra long. I should have done it the other way so we have more width. Either way, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't have really fit actually the other way. But that'll do its job. It, I don't know. So I won't be able to test this thing as far as rain goes. I did get uh, my boundary waters trip that I went on with Jake and Dan and we went for a week. I didn't bring... We had a bunch of tarps but I wanted my extra big tarp for at camp, so we had another tarp. We just wanted to be, like that one day when it was super rainy, we wanted to make Tarp City. And I forgot a tarp, so I bought one up there. And the dang tarp, it's like a, how do I explain it? It looks like the roof of a house. So it's, you know, it's leaned and it's got the flat ends and that's how it comes and it sucks. It literally leaked water, like, all on every seam. And it was brand new, uh, straight out of the, just brand new. And it was just junk. It was leaking. That's all the seams. So, this, I mean, this one doesn't have any seams, really. Eh, there's some seams in there. But, you know. Now I'm just blabbing. The sled worked out great. The axe is great. I do gotta split something later didn't really split anything else the saw is good what else we got here? the backpack actually worked out pretty good I don't think it would be as comfortable with a heavy heavy load but with just like I said I only put my layers in it and stuff it's fine it's not heavy it, it didn't really need any uh, you don't really need a nicer backpack certain things add up quick you know sleeping sleeping bag and uh, backpack alone you can easily drop a thousand dollars on a nice winter uh, sleeping bag and a high-end backpack, but for let's see, 159 bucks combined for the sleeping bag I got and that backpack, that's like a steal. That's a good deal. So all I really got to do for tonight is uh, see how this thing is, see how comfy this sleeping pad is here, and I think it'll be fine. My sleeping bag, that sleeping bag's quite warm. I was really excited to sleep in a brand new one, but like I said, you probably wouldn't want to sleep in it after I did. Oh, I, I like to bring this up, but that's one thing you don't get to catch when you're watching this video is the smells. The food smells good, the campfire is great, the trees, the outdoors, but my feet and my farts and the other stinks of me. Eh. <laughs> Be happy you can't smell. Oh man. But yeah, as far as Monty's sleeping bad, um, I that glue, the little glue piece I pressed in. Um, the other pieces didn't really stick, but that glue did. So I think what I'm gonna do is it, it it'll probably work as is if there's not a ton of moving around. But Monty sometimes gets up, moves around, steps on it and stuff. I think what I'm going to do is take the sled and any weighted stuff, I'm going to set that over the patch kit just to be sure that it'll at least last for tonight. And then I'm just going to send it into the company and for, I think it's 10 bucks, they'll put like a permanent seal on there. That one's already had a hole that's been patched. So 10 bucks, ship it in. They'll put like a 
permanent they'll take the material of the sleeping uh, pad itself and they'll fix it up like really good so yep another pop pad to the uh, the book <laughs> why 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 this one doesn't even glorious you know like the first pop pad was with the Quincy like I was saying he's oh no and then the second one was the river camp what could have caused a hole Yeah, I don't know. And then we had the old got Ruger too excited. <laughs> and now thumbnail. Monty. Like Monty is always, you know, he's fine. He's done winter camping all, does it all the time. Just in these cold temperatures, but when I got him sitting here next to a fire, I just wanna snuggle him up as much as possible and just make him just like toasty, comfy, just maximum comfort, and I don't know why. I'm sure he's just fine, but I wanna grab his sleeping bag and just kinda like nestle him into it and just, I don't know. Just, doesn't that sound cozy? It's like a blanket. Do you want that, Monty? Do you want to be extra comfy? Extra comfy? You want a treat? You're going to get a treat. We, I shouldn't have brought that up yet, but... You look like you're sliding off that. Oh, you are sliding off that. Okay, folks, well... I'm going to shut off that light in that camera. And uh, just watch the glow of the fire for a while here. And just, you know, think about life. And, uh, yeah, look for shooting stars. We just got to let this fire burn down, get a nice coal bed, um, and just clear out this fire pit a little bit more. Maybe I'll dig out some more, but like I said, it's, it's get, we're getting quite the pit here. I just got to need, I just need to have enough room on ground for me to, uh, set up the grate and be able to access it. And we're getting there. Once this little spot that I just messed with over here melts away we should be good to go so I'll give it an hour but yeah I'm gonna shut off the camera and sip on a beer and enjoy myself oh it's hot Let's grab the extra birch bark I got drop around there well as you can see our pit has grown a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is move this stuff over here. scrape out coals as need be. Plenty of room for cooking now. That pit's big. You know, I did end up deciding that I wanted to nestle the Monty. So that's where he is, look at them all nestled up. So before we prepare our dinner, we need to make a cutting board because I didn't, couldn't include one in the budget. So I'm going to split this log here, and this will be our cutting board. Hopefully it splits straight on. Oh, sorry, Monty. It's okay. I'm just splitting it using the light. go that'll that'll do it's not it's not perfect this ends a little better but you know what that's gonna be pretty good Ooh, this 
This will actually work a little bit better. Let's just shave it down a little bit, see if we can. Okay, that is going to be our cutting board. Nice little cutting board. Perfect. Oh, let's just, let's sit in the pit for a minute. Ah, how's that? Ah. So before we prepare dinner, we must talk about it for a minute. First, all I want to say is it's colder than, uh, I think, it was forecasted because my my lips are freezing to the beer can so it's definitely it's chilly out um, so as many of you know um, there is some crazy things happening in the world right now and uh, you know some things are missing from the stores namely TP but there's also other things missing from the stores. But on a side note, you know, there's plenty of things to wipe your butt with if, uh, you know, we're out of teepee. You got snow. I've used snow to wipe my butt before. It works. Birch bark. Um, you can just shower. You could use a sock. You could use your dog if you really needed to, if you're that desperate. A rag. Bleach the rag afterwards. Um, you got a little spray hose on your kitchen sink. You could spray up in there. Um, you know, you can use a nice smooth stick. Leaves, grass. There are so many options. I don't know why the TP, the, the, the new currency of if there's ever an apocalypse, apparently is TP. Anyways, <laughs> beyond that, I went to the store today and uh, I, was, I was like, oh, you know, I have a steak. There's no steaks. Um, so I was like, all right. Maybe I'll have some chicken. There's no chicken. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe some pork loins or pork chops. There's no pork. But lo and behold, there was something that was there. For some reason, this was the only thing that wasn't really bought out like crazy. <laughs> lobster. <laughs> People didn't just go and buy all the lobsters, so we're having lobster tonight. <laughs> the answer is yes. Monty is also getting lobster. What we're making for dinner is a creamy lobster linguine. And it's gonna be good. Mm, 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 mm. And I did get a baguette. There wasn't any loaves of bread, not much bread, but there was baguettes, luckily. We still had our baguettes. But yeah, stores are looking a little scarce. <laughs> What's going on? Anyways, so, um, Let's prepare our lobster linguine. It, it, there's a, there's quite a few ingredients uh, to it, so we need to get we need to get ready. We need to get cooking. Monty, you want some lobster? Monty, you want some lobster? You want some lobster? Monty, do you want a treat? Monty, you want some lobster? Monty, Monty, lobster pasta. Monty, react, do something. First things first, we've got to get our cutting board ready for cutting. This one over here for extra stuff that needs to be put off to the side. Ooh, maybe I'll just keep this one and give you my used one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, no, no, but I am going to christen it. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be christened with a good old meal. Brand new, look at that. Brand new pan. Ooh. Just remember, I'm really sorry. Whoever gets this, I, I almost feel bad, but then again, I don't. Because 
Look at how shiny and new it looks. It ain't gonna look like this ever again. There's only one time when you cook something over a campfire, both these pots, unless you really scrub it good with some steel wool or something, which I don't ever do, but it's never gonna look shiny and new like this again. It's gonna be covered in black campfire char. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we don't got our cutting knife, or our, uh, I don't got my normal fillet knives for cutting up veggies, so we're going to use this. And, you know, I've been using uh, reusable uh, Ziploc bags, but since those weren't included in the budget, we had to go with the old uh, Ziplocs. Okay, we've got garlic to start the potty. Always love garlic. I think I put garlic in every single meal I create. We're just gonna chop it up coarsely. Big old chunks of garlic. Okay, that can go right into the pan. A little bit of wood in there, that's okay. That's okay. All right, next we've got some green onions. Not white onions, we've got green onions. We're gonna chop these up. These are gonna go right into the pan as well. Oh, it's gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna lose a little bit. Let's just add these in as we go. Otherwise, we're gonna lose a whole bunch. We're gonna lose a few, but we've got so many that it's okay. Now, I used to think with green onions, you could only use the dark green uh, portion of it. But, you can use the whole dang thing. The whole dang thing's good. All the way down to the white end. And it actually gets more flavorful the, when you get to the whiter end. That's the more oniony part. So if you're using these green onions or whatever you want to call them, I think some people call them scallions maybe, or I don't know. I call them green onions. Use the whole thing. We're gonna have a whole lot in there. We're chopping right down to the ends. Okay, these are going in. I'm just gonna take this lemon, cut this in half, get that ready, and then what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? We are gonna add in lemon zest to this right here. I zested that lemon. That's why it looks all weird and white. I zested it at home because I ain't bringing out the crater. But that's going in there. So we got the garlic, uh, white onions, or green onions, and lemon zest. And then we're gonna add a big old chunk of butter to that. So let's get that out. Big old chunk of butter. Oh yeah, going right into the pot. Oh yeah, yep, 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 yep. And now, I think that's it for preparing. Yep. That's it for preparing. So what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna cook this up like this, get this, the flavors and aromas going and the garlic, just a little cooked up and then we'll add in the other stuff. But there is one more thing that we need to prepare. And that, my friends, is the lobster tail. The big ol' honkin' lobster tail. I already, look at this thing. Ooh, yeah, that is, that is the payday right there. I deshelled it, took it out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna butterfly this open so it cooks a little better. Get more evenly over the fire. So I'm just gonna slice this and lay it out a little bit. There we go. So then it'll, you know, it'll cook more like a thick steak. Because if it's too round, it'll still be raw. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's just do that. Now, I was wondering 
what should I season the uh, lobster that I'm going to fire roast? I'm going to cook it over the fire on the grate. What should I season it with? And that, my friends, is Montreal. Montreal steak seasoning. The only spice I'll ever need. It's good with pork. It's good with chicken. It's good with steak. It's good with fish. And yes, it's going to be good with lobster. Now I'm making sure to not, this section right here, this is going to be Monty's, so we don't want to get any Montreal over there. He's going to get some good old meaty parts. We're gonna, we're, he's going to get lobster, but he's not, we're, we, he can't give him too much lobster. Might need a lot of it for myself. Oh yeah, so we're going to season this guy with Montreal here. Yep. Okay. Now, I need to rinse my hands from this lobster juice, and let's get cooking. Oh yeah. Welcome to the, the Pit Cooking Show. I'm your host, Matthew Poza. <laughs> We're cooking in the pit. Yeah, yeah we are. Oh. Okay. Now let's just... It's great, great. Sometimes you got to, you got to pound her down Make sure she's stable, especially if you're gonna be cooking up lobster, okay? Or, you know, anything, really. I, I, it's called the Gregory because it doesn't ever spill. Oh, oh no! It's long as you take precautions, because I've definitely not taken precautions. And it's, it's been a mess. Okay. Let's get this on the heat and get that butter melted. All right, I'm gonna quickly grab the other pot and fill it with snow. Start melting that. Put this over here. Now, like I've said, this uh, this video is all about the challenge where I spent $500, so normally I'd have my little spatula, but that's why I got this spoon, because this is gonna be our spatula. For this here, this here cooking, this here episode. Okay. So, like I said, we we're just gonna cook this up for a minute here in the butter. Get this little aromatic cooked down just a hair. Nothing crazy. And then we'll add in some other goodies. Smell the uh, green onions and the uh, garlic. I can't really smell. You know, my face is just hot. I don't know if I can smell anything actually. <laughs> it's all hot. Ah. Oh. Hot fire. Well, I wasn't recording, but uh, this pot was sitting up on this log, and uh, the snow did melt. Log burned in half. Spilled all the water down below where I'm cooking this. And this is full of ash now, so uh, I need to go get more snow and melt it. <laughs> okay, this has been cooking down for a few minutes, a few extra minutes to be honest, because uh, the whole mess happened with the water. So now let's add some other goodies to this here deliciousness in the works. The first thing we're going to start off with is some heavy whipping cream. Okay. Alright. That was a whole pint. A whole pint of it. The next thing we're going to add is some fresh rosemary. Oh yeah. Get that fresh rosemary in there. Then we've got some fresh thyme. Oop. I don't want to get all the sticks in there. Peel off that thyme. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, it's time to add the thyme. Oh, that's a hot fire. 
Always helps if you peel it backwards from the top to the bottom. It slides right off. We're gonna add lots of time. I like time. Fire's so hot. Oh, okay. Next, we've got some fresh basil. I'm just gonna rip it up with my hands and add it on in. Fresh basil. Oh, well, oh, fire's so dang it's so hot. Oh. Next, we've got some black pepper. Love me some black pepper. Black pepper. And for some added kick, we've got white pepper, ground white pepper. Oh yeah, let's, let's add it all. A whole bunch of that. A little extra kick in there, ooh, yeah. You know how I love it spicy. Yep. And just because it might not be spicy enough with all that white pepper, we're gonna add in some crushed red pepper. <laughs> I love the flavor of spice. I just, you know, I can't handle the heat too well. We'll see how it goes. I'll still eat it. I'll just, you know, it'll be spicy. And of course, we've got some salt. Not too much salt. Not too little salt. Just the right amount of salt. A little bit more. A little, little. Right there. It's good. Perfect, perfect. And now, that is our sauce. So we just need to simmer this. We're gonna simmer this until this is uh, gets a lot creamy. You can see it's really runny right now. So basically, with the heavy whipping cream, um, yeah, it's gonna be very runny and this is gonna taste kinda bland and just creamy. But as it cooks down, the longer you cook this, it's gonna start to get thick Everything's gonna cook down, the flavors are gonna come out, and everything will just, yeah. The, the more uh, moisture gets cooked out, it's just gonna get more delicious and more delicious. You cook it down too much, you know, you won't have any liquid left, but we're gonna, we just need to simmer this now. And then, uh, we got another thing to add later. But for now, we're just gonna simmer this down, and then we'll add the lobster in a bit. Ooh, oh jeez. All right, it's water. I'm gonna add some more snow to this. Get a little more wood on this here fire. Step into our pit here. <sighs> yeah, I just don't have the heart to uh, take Monty out of this comfiness. You know, like I was saying before, I just I just like to get him as comfy as possible. And I'm always what's the word I'm looking for? I'm always uh rewarded, I guess, by Monty just loving it and just being all nestled up and enjoying it. So Monty right now is just a warm, toasty little bun in the oven. <laughs> He's enjoying it. That's where he wants to be. He likes comfort. You know, Monty's not a normal dog. Monty enjoys things like being out in winter camping, laying on a sleeping pad, being wrapped in a blanket, and only being woken up for being hand-fed lobster. What can I say? That's right, Monty. Oh man, I'm gonna be careful. There's a tree right here, and um, the uh, our pit here is uh, it's taken out the snow on the bottom layer before the top because the top is all icy because it rained. Like I said, within the last week it was raining, so there's a good couple you know, inches of ice. Oh, she's simmering. Slowly but surely. 
You know, I'm surprised at how slow uh, the simmer is going because it is very hot down here. Very hot. So let's just add some more coals. More coals make it simmer faster. It should be bubbling all around. I'm just, I don't know why it's not. It's so hot. It's so hot. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, whoops, whoops. Our water's good. We'll keep that up to the side. Actually, we can just keep right there, you know what? Oh, it's hot. It's a hot coal bed. Okay, now, now that is bubbling up. Flavors at. Let's see where the flavor's at. Ooh. Mmm. Ooh. Oh. Starting to get pretty good. Okay. We've got our lobster keeping it from freezing our lemons. Get our water going. We're boiling. about ready I can just oh yeah it's starting to get real creamy so now this just needs to simmer for a little bit more this water needs to get boiled we need to boil our noodles so we need to get the next steps going okay let's take this and that like that get some coals under here our stick of butter here we're just going to add a little lubrication to that. Oh, it's hot. And then, we're going to take our lobster tail and throw it on there. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. So good. Stick here. We're gonna see. Make sure this is okay. It's not sticking. Put some more coals under here. This is boiling. Oh yeah. Okay. Time to add the pasta in. Linguini noodles. Going in the pot. Okay. We need to get this bread starting to get warmed up. So we're going to get that right there. This noodle stir up a little bit. Flip back on here. Get some more wood on this fire. Okay, we're cooking. We're cooking. Flip this lobster too. <laughs> That's some beautifully charred, oh, fire roasted lobster right there. We add in the final step to the cream sauce. And that is freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mix that right in there. Oh yeah. There it goes. Okay. Okay. Noodles over here. Noodles are close. Uh, 
Not quite. Lobster uh. uh. still cooking. Oh. Bread toasted next to this lobster. Keep the cream sauce up here. Oh yeah. Oh, it's all coming together. Mm. Okay. Everything is done. Okay, we're gonna drain these noodles and prepare the dinner. It's time to eat. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Drain a little pasta water and some manchi food. Hot meal there. Mix Monty's with a stick. Okay. We're gonna take that. We're gonna add in our linguine right to the sauce. Okay, oh, mix that in. Oh, there's an extra. There's extra sauce. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I I limited myself on pasta, so it'd be extra. Okay, okay. We need to take the lobster. Monty's pieces. Oh. Oh, okay, Monty. Oh, yeah. Chunks of lobster for Monty. Monstinky. Okay, that's that's enough lobster for Monty. I'm taking the rest. Get that in there. Oh yeah, just just slab on that lobster. Oh yeah. Oh. You know, Monty looked like he got some extra lobster there. Well, that's what he means to us. Oh. Okay. Okay. And then, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just getting so excited. Parmesan just to garnish it. Add in our crispy hot bread. Oh. And that right there is a lobster, creamy lobster linguine. Oh yeah. Let's feast, Monty. There's one final thing. I forgot to do with my linguine. That is fresh lemon juice drizzled over the top. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got my second beer about to be finished. Kind of slushy. Before we start, I did have one thing I wanted to do, and that is hand feed Monty a piece of lobster. So Monty, are you a dog that's winter camping, being head fed lobster? Yes, I'm about to be. I just hand fed my dog lobster. It's official. <laughs> Monty got hand fed lobster. Alright Monty, are you a good boy? Do you want that treat? Okay, go ahead. Good boy. Alright. Let's get into this. Mix it right in there. 
on a nice bite of lobster and pasta right off the bat. Here we go. Oh, it's so good. It's starting to get spicy on my lips. You know, the lobster's a hair overdone, I won't lie. <laughs> but I don't care one bit. But what's killing me is the spiciness. Ah. You know, I knew it going in. The crushed red and the white pepper, all the black pepper. Ah. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. Okay, so this is spicy. Um, there's a lot of extra sauce. I'm probably gonna eat out most of the bits of lobster, I won't lie, and all the bread. <laughs> Dip it in sauce. But I might leave some of the sauce and pasta and take it home. It's gonna freeze tonight. It'll be delicious tomorrow. Funk will probably wanna try some. So uh yeah. I'm going to eat until I'm um, full. Leave a little bit here probably. So, uh, I will check back in with you guys when I'm done stuffing my face. And we're getting ready for bed. Oh yeah, this is a good one. All right, Monty, come here. Come here, little critter, come on. Come on, no, no, come here, Monty. Over this, all this stuff. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. There you go, you little creature. Oh, no, no, kiss me. Come on. Settle in. Come on, lay it down. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was so good. That was so perfect. I'm just gonna scoot your butt. About 180 degrees. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Oh. That was so good. That was so good, Monty. You did so good. So, as far as Monty's sleeping pad goes, from what I can tell, oh, Monty. I'll settle in a minute. Anyways, from what I can tell, as I piled on Monty's, uh, or my backpack, 
the sled with all the excess stuff right on the spot where the seal is. From what I could tell, it's not leaking. But only time will tell with that. All it needs to really do is make it through tonight and then we'll get it, you know, professionally patched up. It's chilly though, so I'm sure he'd appreciate the insulation from the ground, but he's got that extra Z rest under there. So it'll be he'll be good either way, even if it goes down to the Z rest only. But uh, I'm sure he'd appreciate the comfiness of the other pad and the insulation. That'd be a nice room. All right, Monty's tucked in. As soon as he settles, we'll cover his face. Yeah, we'll cover it now. He's 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 gonna settle. So as far as me goes, the other thing I forgot to mention is I normally always have two pillows. A head pillow and a knee pillow and I couldn't fit it in the budget so I'm gonna have to use my flannel for my knees or my head and uh, my sweatshirt as the pillow so I'm not gonna be as comfy but uh, when it's a cold night like tonight I usually take my sweatshirt and I'll kind of put it around my face and make it so like the only thing exposed is my face to the uh, hole out of the sleeping bag so I can breathe fresh air because I cannot, I cannot put my face in my sleeping bag and breathe the warm, humid air. I can't do it. So I always have to breathe the cold, crisp air. Um, so I usually take my sweatshirt. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to probably, since it's a colder night, is take my other layers, my uh, thermals. I've got an extra top and bottom, and I'll put that around my neck because I'll be using my sweatshirt as my pillow and my other one as my knee pillow so we'll be good we'll be good but you know i'm assuming i'll be a little chillier than normal with the non-insulated pad because well unless it does a really good job i don't really know i have no idea this is a review <laughs> reviewing it in winter by testing it out on a really cold night <laughs> i'm not sure what the temperature is but it's definitely chilly my beer was freezing and it was slushy my lips were freezing to the can. Everything there's all sorts of frostiness underneath here, so it was like warm and humid, and uh, yeah, now it's all turned to frost and crispiness. So we'll see how the night goes. I'm gonna have to check on Monty here. I really hope that the air holds on the sleeping pad because that's just extra insulation and just comfiness all around, and we'll get it repaired. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> spring <laughs> oh anyways that was a delicious meal I uh, I didn't stuff my face to where I'm just like uncomfortable I ate a good amount and I wanted to have like a nice snack tomorrow and I wanted to share some with funk so there's a good bit of pasta I ate all the lobster obviously I ate all the lobster but Monty's settling and we're gonna pass out wake up in the morning so, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Monty. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> He's like, oh, uh, today? Oh, good morning. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Monty. Hi, oh, how are you doing? 
What are you doing? <laughs> Why do you look a little, you look a little disheveled. Yeah, oh, that's a good boy. Oh, you sleepy head. <laughs> what kind of yarn is that, Monty? Huh? Oh, oh Monty. Oh, Monty, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. You look so sleepy. You look so sleepy. I know he slept good. I slept okay. Oh, hi, you gonna give me a morning ca Oh, no, never mind. He slept good. Um, his sleeping pad didn't hold air for very long at all. <laughs> so he just uses little, the little zero as his backup sleeping pad. Right? Yeah, so... He, uh, just had his little ground pad, and it was really cold last night. The reason I didn't get much sleep last night and didn't sleep very well is first off because I was worried about him being too... Hi. Hi, Monty. I was worried about him being too cold, so I kept just checking to see if he was shivering or anything, and he was fine all night. I, I settled in after like four or five hours of just checking on him constantly just to make sure and he was snoring and he was just fine, no shivers whatsoever. Um, secondly, for some reason, it's never really happened to me before, but it took, I was cold for like an hour and a half to two hours for some reason. I wasn't cold getting into my sleeping bag, but it took me like two hours and I was just like cold. And I was like, what the heck? <sighs> and I thought it was going to last all night. But after like two hours or an hour and a half, I got toasty and then I was fine. I was nice and toasty then. You can get up, Monty. Go ahead. Go ahead, Monty. Go ahead, Monty. Go. Go ahead. You can get up if you want. He's like, I just, uh, just want to stay in here. Monty, or you can stay. But anyways, yeah, it took me a while to get toasty. I thought I was going to be cold all night. I was like, dang, this sleeping pad doesn't work. But it does. It worked. I just got the sleeping pad of the snow. I am insulated enough. It was a clear sky last night, all night. Everything was frosting up, freezing. It was definitely in the teens last night, or single digits. I think it was single digits. Like it said it was going to be. But, uh, yeah, it's blue skies out there. Um, so, sleeping pad is pretty good. Not the most comfy, not as comfy as my other pad, but for the price, it did its job. It's pretty good, and it blows up really easily. So, other than that, we're going to be getting up here. You know, usually I would have slept in a little bit more, but today... Today is Sunday, the day I want to release this video. So right now, it's about 8.30 a.m. I'm about to get out of the sleeping bag. I'm going to pack away camp real quick because i got to drive home, unload the footage, get all my gear out, edit the footage, produce the video, skim through it really quick to see if there's any mistakes, and then I gotta upload it all today. I've got a long day ahead of me. So it's 8.30 now. Let's see what time I get it uploaded by. But we gotta move, Monty. So come over here. Come here, Monty. Come here. I'm gonna put on your booties. I'm gonna put on your booties. Oh, you took a boot. Ah! Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna get moving because we got a stinky breath. Yeah. Hi, 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 bouncy bunny. Hi, 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 my hi. Is it a new day? 
Oh, you got a frosty beard. You got frost. The frost beard is great. <laughs> You want a stick? Where's your stick? Where's your stick? Oh. Yeah, it's cold. It's, it's pretty cold this morning. Okay, oh, my teeth. Good boy. Um, another reason I didn't sleep so good is I had no knee pillow. Um, I had to use my flannel here. I, I was gonna use that for my knees. But I had to put it on. Nice chilly. Oh, he brought it back. You brought it back! Ooh! Ooh! You little frisky critter. These are frisky critters this morning. I think you got a full night's nice rest because you seem full of energy. Okay. So, we're gonna... Yeah, he's really into the fetch this morning. Bring it here, Monty. So we're gonna be packing up camp in record time here. Let's do it. Oh. Oh. You can always tell how cold it is by how the snow is crunchy. Okay, Monty. Yeah, you can hear the crunchiness. That's that's a good indicator that it's cold. Yeah, it sounds all icy. Monty, hear that noise? That's icy. Okay, Monty, I get it, I get it. I get it. You don't like me being... Okay. big mess. It's all a big mess. Pretty much be just shoving things into my bag here because it wasn't very bulky anyways. So as far as gear goes for the challenge of what I used, hi. All right, get your stick. Okay. You're just, you're just all about it today. You're not letting me get away with for a second. I'm not keeping you busy, mister. Um, I think I used everything that I brought out with me, except for the compass. I didn't really need the compass. I just kind of wandered off, went down a trail and wandered off into the woods and didn't need it. So I don't, I, the, there's a icy path on the way out. I'm not gonna need it on the way out. But anyways, yeah, I used everything else. Headlamp knife, everything. So all of it did great. I would use this gear again, not a problem. No problem whatsoever. I was worried about the backpack, but the, the material feels actually pretty good for uh, how cheap it is. The sleeping pad, um, I prefer mine, but I, I could definitely use this one again. Mine's a little comfier. But then again, mine's just like Monty's there, and uh, well, you don't want these sleeping pads, these air pads, near a hot fire. You know? I knew that. I did it anyways, and look at that got me. Another another pop pad. Total of four pop pads on the channel. I'm sure if we keep doing this for quite some time, we're gonna have a couple more pop pads in the future. Oh boy! <laughs> Oh, oh! I forgot to mention when I did the whole uh, blowing up the pad, I was going. Bleh, 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 bleh. Um, I wasn't doing that on this sleeping pad. <laughs> I did that on that one. I just, you know, editing. <laughs> I was just making it silly. That's all.
always brisk when you take off those layers before you get moving. So as far as gear I use goes, if you're interested in looking at any of the stuff I use, um, including some of the stuff I used here, not all of it. If you want to see all the uh, more discount, cheaper stuff that I got, you'll have to check out that last video I linked earlier in this video. But if you want to see all the gear I normally, normally use, you can check the description of the video. And I've got a link to my Amazon page and all the gear that I use down there. So you can check it out down in the description of the video. And I wanted to say, um, for those of you that have watched the earlier videos, uh, last year at the end of winter I broke my old snowshoes, my old tub snowshoes, and I got these and I said I would be telling you how they were for a whole winter. Well, it's been a whole winter. We're almost done with winter. And so far, these snowshoes have not come off once. Uh, these are the Tubbs Panoramic, I think, or something like that. I don't know, I they're linked down in the description or on my Amazon page. But they've not come off once. They got the twisty, bindy thing. I was worried about ice building up and uh, them not really working, but the ice breaks free and it works just fine. The only thing that I don't like about them, the only complaint I have is when I kneel down and my foot goes like that, and it like, it goes, the snowshoe goes too far back. The, uh, the little binding here gets caught underneath this and then it kind of just gets stuck and it undoes the binding, but that's not really a big deal. If you're just walking around snowshoes, you're never gonna have that. Anymore. Sneezy bunny. You okay? Are you gagging? Come here, Monty. Hi. Good boy. All right, folks. So, it's a beautiful blue skies day. Um, yeah, everything worked out. Gear was all great. Used every bit of it. Would use it again. Um, happy with the choices I made. So, so far it seems to hold up. Everything feels pretty durable and pretty good. So, if you want to get any of that stuff that I linked in the last video, so far it's good to go. At least for one night. Um, my old sleeping pad didn't do so good. Uh, I still prefer that sleeping pad, even though I'm not too good at taking care of them. But, yeah. I'd say it was a success. So I'll be uh, making a video announcement about who won all this stuff soon here in the next week or two. And uh, it's time to get home and get this video going. It's currently 9 a.m. right now. So from here on, it's walking back to the car, driving, unpacking myself, loading up, editing. <laughs> And then producing, uploading, and then we'll see where we get. I'm predicting, I'm going to say, I'll say 12 hours from now. I think it'll be live around 9 p.m. Eastern. 9 to 10 p.m. Unless I can work faster, we'll see. But, we're going to get heading back to the car, guys. So, as always, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Let's go, Monty. Come on. Oh.